Hi everyone, it's Fana for Kelowna Now, and today I'm joined by Ian Hill, legendary bass player and founding member of Judas Priest. Thank you very much. How are you doing? Oh, just fine, yeah, yeah. just fine. Good, you guys are currently on tour in support of Firepower, and you're out here on your North American leg. How's it been? It's been really good, it's yeah. really good. Um, we haven't been to this part of Canada for, for quite a while, I don't think, you know. Um, and it shows, you know, because the fans mm -hmm. show up and they go nuts and it's great. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we're having a really good time. Um, it's the third time we've been on this side of the Atlantic so far on, on the Firepower Tour. And uh, we're sort of filling in the blanks at the moment. We're going to the places that we missed on the other two two legs, you know. Um, we're doing a lot of uh, actual theatres in, in the States, in the smaller towns, you know. And it's, uh, it's good fun. It's great fun. Why do you think it's important to hit those uh, smaller cities? Oh, they're fans too, aren't they? You know, yeah. I mean, they <laughs> they, uh, they want you there. They're your fans, and without without fans, I mean, none of this would be happening. You know, yeah. so uh, we we'll try to get around to as many people as we can. Yeah, and uh, you're touring in support of Firepower, as I mentioned, an album that is, you know, for lack of a better term, it's kick ass, honestly. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. it's one that your fans love, and they're actually calling one of your best. So I, I think it is. Yeah. I mean, if you ask. Any musician, what their favourite album is, they'll always have the new one because you just spent months and months putting the thing together, you know. Um, but in this case, I think it's probably true, you know. Um, we always try and improve with each album, and um, th this one's, you know, it just ticked all the boxes, you know. Uh, as soon as I heard the, the the rough mixes, you know, the rough demos that Scott and I get, you know, so I can put bass lines and he can put his drum patterns too. As soon as I heard it, I knew it was going to be a you know, a, a, a strong album, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, when I think about how much success it's gained, I think about Painkiller as well. Uh, an album came out 30 years ago, but it's pretty similar in the way you recorded it, if I understand. Do you want to talk a bit about that process? Uh, yeah, we, we actually played live in the studio as a band for the first time. Um, oh, a long, long time. We've all done it separately. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we've all been there, you know, and all. Um, we, we all make suggestions. Um, how good or bad people are doing, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and it was Andy. We got we had a great production team in Andy Sneep and Tom Allen, who's who's done a hell of a lot of work with us over the years, and a great engineer in Mike Ex Mike Exeter. Um, and it was uh, it was Andy that, that suggested we should play it in the live. You know, we think well, we haven't done that for ages. Haven't we? Anyway, we did, and um, Scott and um, Richie and myself. Just uh, got on the, went in the live room. This is just to get the drum track down, you know. Yeah. We ditched the the click track, and uh, and just went for it, you know. And uh, it, it it it's you get these very very tiny sort of rises and falls in tempo when you when you ditch the click track, uh, almost imperceptible, but but it sort of adds to the character. It gives the song life. Yeah. Um, you know, like playing to a click track is very very accurate, but it. it can sound mechanical after a while, you know, and uh, like I say, with, with these uh, little little changes here and there, it, it sort of gave soul to the songs, you know. Yeah. It really works out a treat. So you'd say that it, it definitely benefited and helped with the success? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, without doubt, that's one of the things. Um, and of course, Andy and Tom got on really, really well together right off the right from the start, you know. Um, and they, they were suggesting the same things, you know, and it was, it was just brilliant. And um, like I say, it, it just went together really, really well. Um, I mean, we just show up basically and play our <laughs> instruments. Those are the guys that make it sound good, you know. <laughs> um, so how does it feel to have an album that you've produced now in 2019 really stack up well against the, the albums that you put out in the 70s and 80s that are, you know, classics and instrumental albums for any metal, metal head? Well, yeah, I mean, like I say, um, we, we, we try and improve with each one, try and, try and you know, keep on top of the game, basically. And um, it, it keeps you relevant. And for us to have some of the chart positions that we had with Firepowers, some, some record chart positions we had, goes to show how relevant it is in today's world. I mean, we might be getting old as musicians, <laughs> but we like to keep the music young, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's us. Awesome. You'll see tonight, you know, there'll be a lot of young people in the audience. Yeah. And uh, as long as we're turning the young, younger ones on as well, you know, there's, there's a future for, well, not just for us, but metal in general, you know. 
Yeah, I wanted to actually pick your brain because, you know, Judas Priest is one of the fundamental pillar bands for metal as a, as a genre. You guys are pioneers. What is it like for you when you look out into metal today? I mean, what do you think of how it's evolved? Um, yes, it, it, there's, many, there's many facets to heavy metal. It's not just the, the, the heavy and the, and the loud, you know. Um, and we, we've, we, we try and fill all those little avenues, you know. And um, over the years, we've done songs that'll make you weep, and we've made you songs that'll make you scared, you know, and stuff like that, and everything in between. In the 90s, there, it sort of fragmented a little bit, and you, you had just a death metal band, you had a speed metal band, you had a grunge band, you had a goth band, and that's all they did. Not there's anything wrong with that, but you, you, you know, you're just narrowing your fan base right the way down from, from day one, really. Uh, what I have noticed um, with some of the bands that I hear on, on um, rock radio these days is the versatility is coming back, you know, and the, the, the using, you know, various styles of heavy, it's all heavy metal, you know, even the commercial songs that we did, all, you know, we'll still do them from time to time. Um, and they're very important because it gets the, the, the style of music across to, you know, people that never heard it before, you know, and it might sort of pull them, pull them, pull them into the fold and, and get them into the, you know, in the music in general, yeah. heavy metal in general. So, um, and like I say, I've noticed uh, quite a few bands now, coming up and coming bands that I hear, um, are starting to get that versatility back, you know, and I think it's a good sign, it's a good thing. Are there any newer bands in particular that you think are doing something really interesting and, and cool in, in metal? It's unfair to mention one or two, there's so many out there, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but I think they're all heading, heading in the right direction so far anyway, from what I've heard. Well, it's my opinion, of course. From one of the pioneers, it's, uh, so that's yeah, a good deal. So, yeah, and I, I, I think it's uh, it, it'll give the metal a good future, you know. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, so for Judas Priest, what do you think it is about you guys and your band that has contributed to such the, a long and successful career? Um, it's a number of things. I mean, we, we, we're all from the same part of the world. Well, initially, we were all from the same part of the world. Um, very industrial area in, in, the, in, the, in the Midlands in, in England. Um, called the Black Country, and it's called the Black Country because it was soot everywhere. You know? <laughs> Basically, that's what it was. Um, so we, we all had similar outlooks, similar backgrounds, you know, and um, and we were basically friends. And um, I think that sort of helped more than anything. Uh, I mean, with a friend, you, you're not afraid, afraid to tell them, you know, what you think, whether it's good or bad, and stuff like that. And there was no sort of prima donna anywhere. Um, you know, it's, it's, you can have the best musicians in the world. If you've got one arsehole, <laughs> it ain't going to last very long, you know, or he's not going to last very long. And we, we were fortunate enough to keep our friendship going, you know. We, we still are. Um, obviously, personnel have changed over the years. But we, we, we don't just choose the best musician, not to say that they're not the best musicians, <laughs> but that come across very badly. No, no. It's, uh, <laughs> But you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's their character, uh, which is at least as important as uh, as anything they're capable of playing, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how we keep going, you know. Yeah. Um, and you guys do. You keep going. You keep trucking along. You're here putting out stellar albums. Um, when you think about, you know, some bands maybe that kind of are still touring the same albums they've been touring since the 80s. Why do you think it's so important for you to keep creating and keep carrying on as opposed to, yeah, you know, heading back to British Steel and playing that? Um, but it's something we've always done. I mean, we, we, the, the, the creative juices flow. And uh, I mean, these days, I mean, financially, there's no point in doing records. Nobody buys them anymore, you know, people give it away. Um, but, but those creative juices are still flowing, you know, so we, we put them to good use and, and, and tune out new albums. And like I say, I try and take that step, in, that step forward a bit with each album. Um, some bands do, some bands find that formula or find that one album and they base their entire career on it, you know. There's nothing wrong with that, people love them for it, but I think we'd look upon it as stagnating if we did something like that, you know. Yeah. Um, that's not to say that we don't go back and play the older songs. I mean, that, those are fans' favourites, you know. Uh, it does become a headache <laughs> at the, the start of every tour, you know, because uh, for every new one you put in, you've got to drop someone's favourite, you know, and yeah. it does get difficult. But uh, I, I think we do a pretty good job, you know, mixing it up with the new and the old stuff, you know. So. Yeah.
That's awesome. Um, yeah, so you guys are getting really good praise on, out on touring for the newer stuff. Are the fans receiving the new songs just as well as they're receiving the old? It, well, yeah, that's, that's, that is one of the good things about the internet. Is it, it's available to anybody who's got a computer, you know. So, um, I mean, in the old days when you had to actually physically go out and buy a record, you know, a little round thing you put on a <laughs> turntable. <laughs> um, obviously, you, you'd start your tour and these people hadn't got your record yet, so you're, you're playing songs and they're looking at you thinking, what are they doing? Uh, now, of course, everybody knows the, knows the songs, they get it instantly. Um, and if they haven't got the album, they'll just go on Facebook or something, they get the live show. I mean, we come back off stage and we watch it in the dressing room, what we've just done. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's that instant. So uh, the, the, the difference today is that everybody does know your songs and it's, it's great. Um, the, the youngsters and, and old folks, you know, old, well, old folks, you know, my age. <laughs> They're all out there singing along with you, you know, and yeah. it's, it's great. <laughs> what is it like to, uh, you know, you were the, you are the longest standing member of Judas Priest. So what is it like to see your music being passed on to those younger generations, you know, through the internet and through their parents' record collections? Well, that's right, yes. I mean, like I say, that's another good thing about the internet. It, it is, your, your music's available. And I'll come back to, 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 the, to the, we might be getting old, but the music's young. You know, and that's uh, that's an important thing for us, anyway. Um, and it's, it makes it more uh, more acceptable to the younger audience. You know, you're not going back hearing those old sounds and old productions from the 70s and 80s. You know, it's all all good stuff. It's all brand new. You know, so um, yeah, that's, that's, that's another tick in the box for the internet, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're coming up on the 50th anniversary, I think 2020, right? Or this yeah. year? Yeah, 2020. Well, it, officially it's this year, but we weren't called Judas Priest until... Okay. And um, like our, our old vocalist, he started the band in 1969, but none of the present members were there at the time. <laughs> and I'm sure somebody would have come out of the woodwork and pointed that out if we'd have celebrated this year. In fact, Alan came out and pointed it out to me. <laughs> he says, why are you doing it? next year or not this year i said you know well we weren't there then yeah and he said oh yeah oh, i get it right <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so th th that's the plan to do it next year we were called judas priest in, in the late 1970. yeah so uh th that's the plan that's awesome so what is it like for you to look to look back on the years and to see all of the success that you have what do you think younger ian would say or, or think about you know seeing judas priest do what judas priest does but yeah, we never dreamt it would, uh, it, it would escalate the way it did, you know. Um, we were lucky to see the end of the week, you know, when we were starting, when we were starting out. Um, and yeah, I never ever would have dreamt I'd still be doing it 50 years on. I mean, the thing is, when we started out in, in, the, in the late 60s, early 70s, uh, the concept of someone being even 40 years old and being in the music, in, or the, the popular music industry, wasn't heard of. I mean, even the old rock and rollers, they were only just in their 40s. Yeah. Um, and the thought of somebody doing it in the 60s, you know, didn't exist back then. Um, it, it's, it's been a great ride though, you know. Uh, I, I wake up every morning and I count my blessings, you know. <laughs> uh, these wonderful places you come to visit, not particularly this bathroom, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, <it's amazing. laughs> yeah, but uh, you, you know, I mean, we've seen the world, you know. It's something that someone from, from my background never gets to do, you know. And uh, it's all part of the enjoyment. I mean, we still love what we do you know, for a living. And it's not just the playing, you know, it's the travelling, the people you meet, you know. It's all, it all adds to the enjoyment, you know, and it, it, it'd be terrible when we, well, we have to live in the real world, sooner or later you will have to grind to a halt. But uh, we'll keep it going as, as long as we can, you know, we're just enjoying ourselves so much. Yeah. And until then, uh, do we, I've heard perhaps we're getting a 50th anniversary album of sorts, is that? There will be a tour, obviously. Uh, we, we, you know, we're not going to pass that one over. Whether it'll be a, an album, we don't know. We have some very strong ideas that weren't used on Firepower. I don't know, another four or five songs, and we, we might have an album's worth of material, you know. Um, but it's, it's going to have to be quality. It's going to have to be a step forward from Firepower, you know. So we're not going to, uh, if, if it doesn't come up to scratch, we, we, uh, we won't, well, we, we won't rush it, put it like that. Mm -hmm. right. So it might not be ready for for next year but um, there's no reason why there shouldn't be another al album you know sooner or later um, like I say those juices are still flowing you know yeah 
Um, I, this is just, you know, me wishful thinking, but maybe another celebration for 50 years. Will we perhaps get to see Iron Maiden and Judas Priest on stage together again? That's mentioned all the time. Right. It, it, it never, you know, it'd be great if we could, you know. Yeah. But, it, but the schedules are never, it, you know, they're on tour and we're in the studio. Yeah. They're in the studio, we're on tour, you know. And it's, uh, it, it, it sounds easy, you know, let's go on tour with our maiden, you know, or whatever. But it's not, <laughs> unfortunately. It, yeah, it, it would be great. It would be a great, uh, great achievement if we could get that together. But um, we'll have to hear from the other parties as well and see who's doing what. Whether it'll be next year, I don't know. I mean, um, it might detract from our 50-year celebrations, you know. Yeah. But, um, but we'll see. I, I mean, but I think everybody's up for it. Yeah. It's just kind of getting around to it. And like I say, everyone's schedule. Well, uh, Ian, thanks so much for taking the time. Uh, looks like you got to get on stage, yeah, so I appreciate yeah, yeah. it. I'm going to put my party clothes on, yeah. <laughs> thanks so much, and thank you guys for watching Kelowna Now. This has been Ian Hill with Judas Priest. Thank you very much.